Uh, cool. Well, without further ado, it looks like there's no other questions right now. Um, I did want to just give you a quick intro for James, who's coming up now. Um, so James works with a company called Man Crates. Uh, he is the manager of customer service and customer champion over there. Uh, he's actually been manning the business end of a phone for a pretty long time. Uh, and most recently, he's been uh, attending the customer service front lines over at mancrates.com. Um, He's been there since the early days of the company in 2012, and he was actually the only guy on the other end uh, of the customer support team uh, and their 1-800 number. And now, three years later, he has a team of uh, 13 dedicated reps that are working on providing awesome personalized service for all the man creates customers. Uh, and he's doing it just the same way he's always been doing it ever since he was flying solo. So he's here to tell you a little bit more about what it's like working on their team and what it's like on some of the busy shopping days they get. So uh, James, please take it away. Hey, everyone. Uh, good morning uh, slash afternoon, depending on which coast you are on. Um, I, uh, I just want to get started by uh, kind of telling you a little bit more about Man Crates and what we do. Um, we basically, uh, in a nutshell, sell awesome gifts for guys. Uh, we ship, think, uh, gift baskets, but in wooden crates uh, served up with a crowbar. Uh, that's most of our gifts. We also offer gifts in uh, ammo cans, cigar boxes, uh, all kinds of fun stuff. We even offer our answer to flowers, which is kind of like a jerky gram. It's a box of meat that you can send uh, the loved men in your life uh, instead of flowers. So we kind of run the gambit. We like to pretend that we're, um, well, we don't like to pretend. We like to know that we're the uh, experts in the, uh, in the man gifting field. Uh, we like to pretend that we know what we're doing all the time. Of course, uh, being part of like a startup, it's a constant evolution and service is part of that uh, evolution. Uh, going from one person to 13 was uh, kind of a crazy road. And I picked up uh, some kind of uh, some kind of knowledge that I'd like to share with you, uh, knowledge and shortcuts and ways to hold things together with bubble gum and paper clips, uh, which seems to be the way Cyber Monday goes for a lot of us. Uh, it kind of hits like a tidal wave and uh, leaves a path of hopefully happy customers, but also a little bit of uh, you know frantic panic in its wake as well. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go over a little bit of background, like how we handle it, what we see, um, you know kind of give you a little bit of insight and then share uh, the knowledge that I've been lucky enough to gain uh, through a few Cyber Mondays with Man Crates uh, with you guys. Uh, so uh, on our team, uh, like like we said earlier, uh, we have four local and nine remote. That makes things interesting uh, having people in another state. We have a dedicated support team in Boise, Idaho, uh, and we have uh, four local in Redwood City, California that are part of our headquarters. Um, we're staffing phone, email, live chat, internal chat, uh, and top buyer hotlines. Uh, our top buyer hotline is for our 500 best customers. Uh, we call it the bat phone. Uh, and uh, that basically is, uh, is a number that you can call. You will get a rep right away. We will answer the call. Um, you're guaranteed that super duper red carpet white glove service. Um, it's something that we have had success with in previous holidays. We're doing it again. It's going to work out really well. Uh, the customers seem to love it. Uh, the, the ones lucky enough to get that number seem to love it. Uh, and it also gives us a chance to kind of shine and, and stand out amongst the crowd. Um, also, too, I forgot to mention uh, the social media channel. It's really important, especially Facebook. We get a lot of interaction, pictures of gifts being opened. Um, also, opportunities to answer problems uh, and be very public with our awesome responses to kind of show everyone that we're there, we're listening, and we're responding to our customers. Uh, social media, very important, um, and getting more and more important to us as the days go on here. Uh, it's, it just kind of encompasses what we're all about. So uh, getting prepared is probably where to start. Um, I like to start as soon as possible. Um, people start to talk Christmas in January, and I'm one of those kind of people. Uh, I like to anticipate kind of disasters before they occur. I found that uh, that'll get you ready for surprises along the way. Um, trying to anticipate the needs of, of your customers and your team 
is important but difficult if you don't have a crystal ball. Uh, so you kind of just have to plot everything out very methodically and, and hope that you're walking the right path. You kind of walk into that hallway blind. Uh, so planning is important. There will always be surprises though. Uh, in order to make sure that I'm clear up, uh, cleared for those surprises, uh, I like to make sure that I have all my side projects kind of tucked into bed um, or, you know, placed a bookmark in them so that I can pick it up when the busy season is over. Very important to kind of just let those things go. Uh, if it's not finished, I'm a completist, but if it's not finished, I push it to the side of my desk. Uh, I leave a post-it to remind myself after the crazy is over to get back to that. Seems to help. Uh, post-its are a good memory substitute for me. Uh, I find that they're very helpful. Uh, Having an idea, too, of the previous year's flow helps to plan for this year. It's, if you happen to have the data, it's really helpful to see where the spikes and valleys are in your contacts. Um, of course, the ebb and flow of contact is going to be totally unpredictable. The, you know, the tide is going to move in and out differently than it did every year before that. Uh, but using last year's numbers as a guide is a great way to make sure you've got kind of your ducks in a row for planning for this coming year. Um, if you haven't had a holiday season before, which was in a position that we were in the first time I dealt with Cyber Monday, I kind of looked at previous holidays. If you have any kind of point of reference, that's better than nothing at all. Um, so use that data uh, and understand kind of how things work for you, and it, it really helps you kind of get your belt tightened up uh, for when things get crazy. Um, also, too, you probably want to revisit the biggest wins and losses from your previous year before you get rolling on planning. Um, that really helps to go over things and kind of, we, we tend to do a post-mortem right after the holidays, like everybody's thoughts right after the holiday are like, what went well, what didn't go well, um, how did we succeed, how did we fail, but we tend to leave those notes in January. Um, and we may revisit them, you know, maybe in June. Uh, we have a Father's Day spike, so I revisit them maybe in June. But then then my notes from the last holiday kind of become less important to me and, and as the buildup for the holiday begins to settle in, uh, things get crazy, we forget about those notes. I keep them in a folder on my desktop um, or I link to them in a calendar reminder. Like when I'm done with my, you know, big postmortem presentation in January, I'll put it you know, I'll put it in a Word doc, just the basic gist of it, and then send myself a calendar link. Uh, that seems to help in like the beginning of October to say, hey, here's what was important last year. Don't forget about that. Uh, reminder, reminder, reminder. Go back to this, look at it, absorb it, and then learn. Uh, so that seems to help a lot. Um, also, to getting prepared, uh, getting rid of known issues so you can deal with the inevitable surprises, right? You want to make sure that you're, you're getting all this stuff out of the way uh, that you can you know, get out of your plate uh, before the real fun begins. Make sure you've handled everything that can be handled. Work with your tech crew to clear up the language on that site. Uh, you know, make sure your team knows all of the workarounds for anything crazy that might pop up. Uh, to that end, you want to align your goals with other departments. I'm kind of working up this page backward. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, you want to align your goals with other departments. So if you need tech team to work with you, you know, get in there, get dirty with them. Make sure you're not running up to their door at the last minute and saying, hey, I need help with this, changing the language on the website. Uh, Cyber Monday for them is going to be all about damage control, and you don't want to add to that fire by saying, hey, there's this thing that I forgot about a month ago that I need changed now that's creating contact. Um, to that end, you want to work with them to identify and destroy queue fillers. Uh, and what I mean by queue fillers is anything like that, where the language is unclear in the website and the customer's calling or emailing or chatting about it. Uh, you also want to talk to your team about what they consider to be those queue fillers, too. That's very important. Uh, my reps have awesome insight. They're noticing things that I don't get to see anymore. So it's always helpful to have an extra set of eyes. If you're lucky enough to be flying solo like I was in the beginning, make sure you work with the other members of your team and really listen to your customers to find out what's killing your queue. Uh, it, it helps customers, you know, a great source of information. They're also going to, you know, if you're paying attention to them, they're going to let you know what your biggest problems are. Uh, and, and up to this point, you know, you should be really be listening to your team and your customers to figure out why those contacts are coming in. And if it's anything preventable, get it off the board right away. 
Um, also, too, on just kind of the technical end of preparation, I like to get macros and uh, kind of shortcuts ready. Uh, chat shortcuts are a lifesaver when you are swamped and the phone's ringing and 19 people want your attention. Uh, being able to hit two keys on your keyboard and type a complete solution is amazing. And you type it perfectly every time. You mentioned being the king of typos. Uh, yeah, it helps. Uh, when you're typing with one hand and you can type a perfectly written paragraph, it's amazing. Um, um, so use those uh, shortcuts for sure. Use those macros. Macros are going to get you through the darkest hours uh, of, of your uh, contacts. When, when everything looks hopeless, macros will come in and save the day. It turns a 10-minute contact into a 20-second you know, contact. It's amazing. Uh, also, to uh, you know, just getting responses, those common responses ready for OLARC. Uh, also, I found handy too when I'm using chat and there's a lot of chats coming in at the same time. I like to have a generic response that says, "Hey." I've, I've got you, you're here, I'm with you. It'll be just another minute before you have my full and complete undivided attention. So kind of an unintentional chat cue where you can take that chat, uh, but also you know let the customer know that you're just finishing something up and you'll be right with them next. Uh, it seems to be pretty helpful. Uh, customers seems to understand that uh, when you tell them, you know, hey, you're next in line, they at least feel like you're, you know that they exist and you're on your way. Uh, I found that a lot of customers, especially in Cyber Monday and busy holiday you know, days, uh, will be very understanding of that, hey, you're next, give me just a minute uh, kind of a cue. Uh, 